Hi, my name is David Jay. I'm the founder of asexuality.org. And for Ace Awareness Week uh, this year in 2019, I wanted to tell a story that I wish I had been able to hear uh, when I was younger. So, like a lot of aces, um, when I was, and like a lot of people in general, when I was younger, I struggled a lot with um, the fear of loneliness. I had the sort of the usual sense that like maybe I wasn't worth connecting with, like I didn't know how connection worked. I think everyone struggles with that. But layered on top of that, I had this story that I had been told by society that um, if I wasn't going to connect with people sexually, then my connections weren't ever really going to count. That if I wasn't going to connect with people sexually, I wasn't ever going to be able to offer them the things that they really needed, so I was never going to be deserving of deep full intimacy with another human. Um, when I f was first really struggling with my ace identity uh, and I would tell people about it, they would try to comfort me by saying, you know, it's okay, some people are just alone forever. And that was not what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to be alone forever. Um, I had and still have this like very strong desire to form deep, meaningful, emotional connections with people. I say I've got like an intense intimacy drive. <laughs> and. Uh, and it was scary to look out in the world and not really see models of how that happened. There were stories of really deep friendships. Um, there were stories of people who sort of would live their lives together, but there weren't stories of how you built that. The way that all of my sexual friends, like there was a process, there was a script, they would date people, they would hook up with people, and then it would lead into this form of you know, relationship that had a path towards marriage, towards family, towards other queerer ways of kind of having a partner um, that was a committed, consistent part of your life. And I didn't know what that looked like for me when I was younger, when I was in my late teens and early 20s. And not knowing what that looked like, not having that script um, was terrifying. It uh, really um, created this, this fear in me and this, this drive in me to understand what connection looked like if it didn't follow that pattern. And so uh, I, like a lot of other aces, set out to explore that. I set out to write my own script. Um, I kind of, where my, well, my friends had been handed this sheet of paper that had a bunch of rules about how to connect with people and a bunch of negative consequences and shame if they broke those rules. I was handed this blank sheet of paper. And uh, I started uh, looking around. I'm, I identify as aromantic, and that word didn't exist then, but I realized that the Unlike a lot of aces, I wasn't drawn to kind of dating and the emotions of dating, um, but I was drawn to having really close relationships with people. And so I started looking around and figuring out where in those, where in my life those relationships happened. Like I had people I was close to even if those relationships weren't yet really committed. Um, and I realized that I was, in my case, I was close to the people who I did things I was really passionate about with. Um, so I was an activist in, climate and uh, different vo youth voter mobilization stuff. And I realized that the people I was doing activists with, activism with were the people who I got to see on a regular basis, the people who I got to share really deep emotions with. And that's where my most powerful relationships were coming from. And so I started looking at community building rather than dating as the activity that I engaged in to bring intimacy in my life. And that started to work like pretty well. <laughs> um, there's a lot you can do by intentionally building community that serves that need for intimacy the way that it does, um, at least for me as a romantic person, the way that it seems to for uh, romantic people through dating. Um, and so I was building community, it was great, but I, there was this problem which was that uh, people in my life would start dating people or they would, something else would happen in their life and they would need to sort of move on. And um, there was never an acknowledgement that our relationship was changing. If I was close friends with someone and suddenly they needed to not see me for three months or six months or a year, um, there would just be the sense of like, oh, you know, I got caught up in things, but when we see one another again, it'll be like we never left. And um, for me, I was losing the people who were the fabric of my life. And I never knew when I was gonna lose someone who's the fabric of my life. I, um, in a way that uh, people sort of didn't have that problem of like their, their 
partners were going to disappear on them like that. And so I really started thinking about how do I create that kind of commitment? How do I create that kind of certainty? How do I create relationships where if someone needs to run off and not see me for months on end, we at least have a conversation about it. We at least acknowledge the transition. Um, and that's where I started experimenting, not really with romance, but with intention. I started saying, how do I have conversations in my relationships about the relationships? And uh, I experimented. It was a tricky process. It's scary. It's really scary and for me at first to sit down with my friends and talk about um, just talk about a relationship and talk about how it makes me feel and ask them how it made they, them feel. Like some people became uncomfortable with that. I think I lost a few relationships because people w were uncomfortable with that when I was still figuring out how to do it. Uh, and what I um, learned how to do because it was such a new process for people is I would um, kind of gossip about it. I would say like, hey, I have this person and we just, uh, like we, we just escalated. We just had a really amazing conversation where we talked about our relationship and what we want out of it and where it's going. I would say this to people who I wanted to have an intentional conversation with like months and months before I ever had the conversation. So they just knew it was a thing that I did. And then in the weeks or a few weeks before having the conversation with them, I'd be like, hey, I've really been thinking you're starting to play a really important role in my life. And like, I, if you're open to it, I'd love to sit down and have a conversation about that. Just like name the role we're playing in one another's life and say if we want to express intention about where that can go. And like some people would be down for that. Some people would be like, I've seen you do your asexual shit. And like, I don't work that way, so let's not do it. I'd be like, great, cool. <laughs> like we'll, we'll have a vanilla friendship. It'll be great. Um, but other people would be really intrigued and really excited because what I found was that when I thought that by being ace, I was gonna like be failing to give the non-ace people in my life a form of intimacy that they wanted, what I discovered is that I was exploring a form of intimacy that they found to be deeply liberating. And that when I could invite them into the kind of ex intimacy that I was experimenting with as an ace, uh, that was really new for them. That was really fun for them. It wasn't doing the same thing as their romantic or sexual relationships, but it was doing a different complementary, really exciting thing. And so I started to uh, go on these long walks with people where we would share just like, what are we doing together? What are we doing and what is that adding to our lives? And then um, given that we're playing this important role in one another's lives, like are there things we want to be committed about? Are there ways of continuing to show up that um, we want to turn from just like circumstantial uh, things that are happening to promises that we're going to keep and talk about if they have to change? Are there things that we're not doing that we want to explore doing together? And I found that having those conversations fundamentally transformed how my relationships worked. My relationships became a lot more stable. Um, uh, when they changed, we talked about how they were changing. Um, when I had to move across the country, I could go to the people who are close to my life and say, like, look, I want to be in a long-term relationship with you. I, like, I, I'm excited to continue talking this much. I'm excited to like come out and visit you this much. And then um, and we got to make commitments about how our relationship would continue rather than just saying, like, I love you so much and I'll talk to you without saying how much, or I'll see you without saying when. Um, and so that certainty that there were not just people who cared about me, but that we've been able to express intention and make commitments about how we were going to show up in another's lives, um, that was transformational. That was the thing that I think more than anything else helped to uh, uh, remove that fear of loneliness from me. Um, because it also, helped me to understand how, as an ace person, I have uh, immense um, things to offer people, not just other ace people in my life, when it comes to connection. Um, I have like, not only am I, as I'm sure you all are, like people who are fully worthy of connection, but we are these sort of pioneers who are exploring new ways of connection that other people can find liberating. Um, we're not lacking a form of connection that people need. And so I'd love to uh, leave you with that thought, with the idea that um, as aces, um, it's not just 
that we're worthy of connection. It's not just that um, it's a thing that we can create in our lives. Um, we are sort of on this path where we're filling that blank sheet of paper. We're inventing new forms of intimacy that can not only make the fear of loneliness go away for us, it can, make, uh, it can help to change how the fear of loneliness works for um, all of our friends and for everyone else in the world. Thanks.